can see that the mask. Hmm. Please. Put on your mask. Put on your mask. Hmm. Mask. So there, where is your mask? Are you set? Yes. Are you all set? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Marizi and uh, members of the press. Uh, it's unfortunate that I have to address you here in front of the gates of the Supreme Court of Uganda. And I've come here to make a very brief statement. Such day for our country that the events, the unconstitutional events that started unfolding yesterday in the premises of the Supreme Court are continuing today. Yesterday, when I was reading my consolidated ruling, which covered the ruling on the recusal application filed by Mr. Mavili Ismaili. I specifically stated that I could not, it had not been called yesterday and I could not uh, pronounce my ruling on it. By, I discovered Mr. Mavili uh, introduced himself in court and when I discovered that he was in court, I made an order that I would deliver that part of the ruling today at 11 a.m. When I arrived at the court this morning, the tent where the court had been sitting was being dismantled. That was understandable because the court has been hired, the tent was being hired, of course, at great expense. And the reason why the court had moved to the tent was because we are operating during COVID times when we were having high numbers of people, parties, and lawyers, and the judges sitting at the same time. So I immediately talked to the court supervisor and requested that the Supreme Court boardroom, sorry, the Supreme Court courtroom on the second floor, be prepared for me to deliver the remainder of my ruling. And I'm glad to report that the court was accordingly prepared. I waited in my chambers for Mr. Mavizi to show up in the courtroom so that I could also go to the courtroom. As I address you to now, is coming to one o'clock, almost two hours later. And I received a call from one of you saying you are waiting outside. Ordinarily, the judges are not supposed to address, to walk through the meeting. But at the same time, I cannot keep quiet when we are seeing these kinds of things unfolding when the Chief Justice is actually in residence. I made inquiries from the registrar. He's not party to the closing of the court. I am the administrative judge of this court, and I have not made this directive. This is the Chief Justice's court, and he's in his office. So um, I inquired from the police officers, I will not mention the name, why the gates of the Supreme Court are being locked. One, to a litigant, and two, to the members of the public, because my understanding of public includes the media. We have just concluded the presidential election petition where you had access to the court, and the recusal application I'm supposed to read was filed under the same petition. So I am very, very surprised 
that somebody has ordered an unprecedented closure of the Supreme Court of Uganda to the public when the Chief Justice of Uganda is in residence and for two hours he has done absolutely nothing to change this unconstitutional and unlawful uh, order. So it's against my the practice of judicial officers to refrain from speaking to the press. I have been forced to come and address you. Because Mr. Mavidis was supposed to receive a ruling from me. And apparently, this is continuing because there has been an effort to gag me to read my ruling, which is unconstitutional. I also wanted to make another, now that I'm here, I also wanted to correct an impression which has been given by the official spokesperson of the judiciary, Solomon Moyita, who, without talking to me, has gone, went ahead yesterday to speak to the press, and who has also issued a statement maligning my name when he has, doesn't have the facts. I would at an appropriate time issue my own statement about the development that led to yesterday's events. And since Mr. Muita, the judicial spokesperson, has proved to be inclined either to speak from a, an uninformed position or to speak on orders of powers that be, from now on, I'll take the responsibility to communicate the position that I hold to the press directly. But the official position as of now is that my file, which was confiscated yesterday, has not been returned to me. This morning, I went to the registry to recover the file, and I was informed by the court of, uh, staff that the file was not returned. This is the place where files are supposed to be kept if they are not kept in the judge's chambers. I inquired from the one of our registrar who is in office, he was not aware about the file. The registrar staff informed me that they had left the files in the boardroom, which I checked yesterday and the files were not there. This morning, I went back and checked in the boardroom and the files are not there. So I'm left with no conclusion that my file is still has been confiscated, is still being confiscated by none other than the Chief Justice of Uganda. Because yesterday, as I approached the tent, his security detail, which is attached to him for his personal security, is the one which removed the file from the tent where the court has been sitting. And it's very unfortunate. So since the files are not in the official registry, I tried to access the Chief Justice, he was engaged. I tried to access his personal assistant, he was not in office. But the position as of now is that my file is still confiscated, unconstitutional. And that is very, very unfortunate. So with those, no, I'm not going to address Uganda. <laughs> so with those words, uh, I want to say to the litigant who was supposed to receive his ruling that I will deliver his ruling at sometime next week on a date that I will communicate to him. I hope the communication in his has uh, his uh, since he's unrepresented. I'm sure there is an address that where you know his official telephone number and whatever other contacts are indicated so the communication will be to him and as for you the members of the press you and i know the provisions of the constitution this court is a public court no one no one has the authority to lock it during office hours 
that is not the judiciary that the people who made the constitution, all the people of Uganda, that's not the judiciary that was envisaged. And it's very, very unfortunate that this is happening under the watch of none other than the Chief Justice of Uganda. Thank you. Thank you, my lord. No, I think I will stop there. The rulings of the court are delivered in person, and that's the decision I've made. And I don't see why the litigant cannot receive his ruling in person. That's a decision that I will need to make, and I've not been contacted to know why this gate has been closed to a litigant or to the public for accessing for purposes of conducting the business of the court. Thank you. This is going to tie you, Guru. Hello. <laughs> yeah. What the I'm <laughs> 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 